Not even the depths of hell could have forged a diamond this special. So today we have the pleasure of working with Gerard Toyota out here in New London, Connecticut. Or maybe this is Waterford. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm going to give this car a quick wipe down. Uh, the owner didn't ask me to do it, but... I'm gonna do it because there's some spots and some cobwebs and I feel like I can clean up the chrome a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna get our video done. So this is what it looks like right now. It's probably not gonna look much different after I clean it, but all we can do is do it, right? Uh, let's see, matte paint, special express wax. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and bring you guys down here. Um, I use different parts of the rag for different parts of the Um, I do believe he is selling it, but we will get the story on it when he returns. So I'm going to just use this part of the cloth just to get the wheels and then I use the rest of the clean rag for the rest of the car. Did you want me to use the Special Express wax or? Yeah, I mean, that's all I use on it. Too. Right, cool. It's like a quick on off. Mm -hmm. you know. And what did the website do? 
It's a um, it's an online um, auction. Okay. Um, so you pay them you pay them registration fee. You can do there's different levels. I picked the highest level for the most um, unique car. Um, they have to accept the you know they they review like a certain batch of pictures. They, like I sent some quick pics over it, and then they determine based on the. You know how the rarity and stuff and how individual the car is whether you could put it in that category so that they did with mine so um and then you pay the two grand and then they they the auction runs for a week it's time so it's a, a full week so you know 24 hours times seven it doesn't stop and it and, and as the auction goes on the representatives or you can answer online questions for people who log in or are interested in it. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to interact with them and can answer their questions. And then at, towards the end, hopefully the, the number goes up. The last person makes the last bid before time expires gets the car. Then, I, then I, the only thing I have to do is arrange a payment and, uh, and pick up of the car. That's it. And they, they, they collect a, a percentage of the final selling price. That doesn't yeah. Come, yeah. Now are you... Um, are you putting a reserve price on the view? Like, I had a guy, I had a guy from Chicago accept 115 like a month ago, but then he, he started getting, I mean, I've had a lot of people inquire about it, obviously, a lot of people come in and drool all over it, and, you know, especially middle-aged middle guys like me, who remember the car when it was, when it was new, you know. And what year is this? Uh, 74, 74, um. But they only imported them from 70 to 74 in the U.S. The rest of the world got them all the way till 96. Wow. So like Europe got them. And they just modernized. But the, the, the general shape of the car never changed. But like they put a modern drivetrain in. Like I think they put a Mustang 5 liter in it. Like um, what, uh, after like 1989 or 1990s. Like yeah. But, you know. There's not too many cars that, that exist anymore that, that aren't modified or, I mean, that that's a current, I, let's put, I guess that's a modern interpretation of the historically correct race car with the factory campaign. Yep. But I just like, you know, I updated it. I did, um, you know, 18 inch wheels with the Michelin tires, yep. upgraded the brakes, um, cooling system. The I mean, everything's redone in it. Um, that's what took me so long, is finding parts and doing it right. And, you know, like the seats like are Kevlar carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. uh, I got those in Boston. Um, the seat belts are from um, a NASCAR company, Safecraft, those NASCAR belts. They custom embroidered for me. Yeah, to be honest with you, I don't, when it's something for me, like I knew what I wanted when I bought it from the guy. Because yeah. I had researched it for months before yeah. in the hopes that he was gonna sell it to me. Yeah. But, um, when he finally did, I started doing it as soon as like like the day I got the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I never thought it would be. Dude, it was it was painstaking, man. So yeah. like, the driving around, talking to people, taking the engine out, bringing the engine, and, and it just people have no. If they if you want to do something right, people have no idea how hard it is. But yeah. it's easier to buy it yep. than it is to a lot easier. <laughs> yep. you know? But, I mean, it came out pretty much exactly the way, the way I wanted it to. Um, the only other things I would do if I, if I don't sell it, um, that I'll keep up. If I don't sell it for what I want, I'll keep it for good. Yep. And um, I'm gonna get the authentic wheels for it, but they're, they're really, they're like five grand a wheel, they're magnesium. Wow. They, they make them per order, so it's like 20 grand for the wheels. Yeah. Uh, they're 15 inch, not, not 18s. Uh, so that would make it look a lot more authentic, um, like a factory car. Um, I probably put like an aftermarket AC in it because it gets, dude. It's like a, you can't like a day like today. Yep. It would be over a hundred in there. Yeah. I mean, it get, it's all right when you start moving, but once you're sitting in lights, mm -hmm. I mean, you got to wear shorts and a, like a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it gets real hot in there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because there's no AC in it. Oh no, no, it, it's it's a race car. It's flat, you know, it's a flat out race car, so you know, it's about as good as I could get it to rep, to rep it for sale. 
You can go crazy on it. If you really want to really make it look perfect, I, I could, but. And now, is this the original engine in it? Original matching number, so 351 Cleveland. Um, it's a ZF transaxle, the same they put um, they put in the GT40. That came out of the GT40. Uh, um, see, this car was supposed to replace the, the the GT40 for an everyday car, you know what I mean? It was like, it was Ford's way of uh, giving people more comfortable GT40, you know? Uh, but it just, you know, it was released in 1970, so they like, you know, the gas crisis was coming and that killed it, and then, you know. But again, the problem is, man, like now, the reaction I get from like little kid, little girls up to, you know, 50 year old guys, I mean, everyone loves a car. But when I take it places, people shit their pants. Yeah, yep. It, 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 it brings a, that car creates more of a stir than any car. I've had Ferraris, mm -hmm. even yellow Ferrari convertibles, Porsche Turbo S's, uh, you know, Cayenne Turbo S's, all kinds of M cars. I mean, I've been doing this my whole life. Yeah. That car by far gets the most out of any one of them. No, yeah, no to be honest, I mean, it took me, it took me all the way up to pretty much when I got divorced, like 14, to really finish it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I finished it to the point where you see it now, but I really just perfected it yeah. in the last year, you know? Yeah. So it took a long time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they still do the shows every Monday. Oh, they do? Yeah, every Monday. See, the problem is now, now that I got to where it is and I'm repping it for sale, yep. I don't want to take it out and have something happen to it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's never, it's never driven. I had my guys, uh, I had my top tech back there tune it up for them, new plugs in it, change the oil, do all that shit. And it runs better than it's, I mean, it's fast. It, it was never as fast as, as what as what it is now. Um, yeah. not, and that's another reason why I don't want to get rid of it, but. That's I, another reason why you want to get rid of it? I don't want to get rid of it, no, no. Oh, and the last thing I would do is I'd put the, um, electronic throttle bodies on it, you know, the individual throttle bodies. The, the real race car had that, mm. you know, but they make a place in, in St. Peter, Petersburg, a guy makes, like, you're supposed, you're supposed to have, have individual uh, Weber cars on okay. the top, so eight of them. Yep. But he makes one that looks antique, but it's all electronic. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it looks the part, you know. Yeah, yeah. but you get, you but get all the benefits yeah, of the yeah, old yeah. school look. But then you get the performance of the new school. Yep. And when did you buy the car? What's that? When did you buy it? Uh, I bought it at the end of 07, right before I got married. Mm. And I got divorced in 14, so that was the last thing. Yeah, one of the things that drew me to this were the uh, pedal lights in the front. So, so I, I'm having a hard time finding this. Um, so those are actually from an from an FJ Cruiser. Okay. And and I mean I could have got Heller or something from like the antique looking ones, but you know I think just I got the I got the measurements from our, from the parts department and they they were gonna fit so and they look good. See see the, that they look and fit exactly the way I want them to. So yeah. Um, the the, the they had a Pan American rally in Mexico. I don't know if you ever heard of that. It was okay. back in the day, like a long, long time ago. I think it was like in the, it was like in the mid '60s to like they did it for like ten years, almost 1980s, give or take. But um, they put that car in there, and that had the running lights and everything, and they had it, you know, ready for like a cross country race. Yeah, like a Baja 1000, but on on roads, you know, in Mexico. Yeah, I'm pissed. I don't want to try to find it. 